go to class, go to class. Can you guys see my screen, everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So let's go to slideshow and let's start from. So again, welcome to um, third week and uh, day three, as we used to call it. So uh, this will be our agenda today. Uh, we're going to do basic um, recap for from the last class on the CICD uh, pipeline and the, all those things. Then we're just going to talk briefly on the you know Linux command again. You know some of the popular ones again. Those are the ones that we've been using so far. So uh, the AWS again. These are just overview of what we've done so far in the class. So and the, um, so going to the straight to the last class. This is what we did. We talked about Jenkins pipeline script which we built something like this from, from scratch. You know, we just use like a, a snippet. Okay. We just use like a snippet uh, from the code and uh, you know, to build, um, to build a pipeline with about four stages, you know. Um, so again, um, the, the Jenkins pipeline script is a fundamental of pipeline as code. You know, uh, instead of we doing all those clicking, you know, doing the, um, doing the freestyle project on Jenkins, you know, we use this script to do the pipeline. And, you know, it will run through the process one after the other. The stages, you know, you see all the stages that we have build, uh, test, deploy. You can have a lot of them. You can have five stages, depending on the company, the requirements, you know, depending on, on what they want to integrate. Between this build and deploy, they can have four different stages in between. So maybe static code analysis, you know, it could be another thing, different requirement packaging may be there as a separate, as a different stage, you know, there could be a lot of things. So between, again, depending on the, on the company or on the team, the requirement for the application. So, but uh, these are the basic, uh, you know, you just understand what they do, you know, this is, this is the name of the stage. You know, I try to explain some of all these uh, curly braces. That's what they call all this. You know, uh, like this pipeline as is the one that covers everything from from the beginning to the end. Everything is within this one that says pipeline. So, and uh, again, we created the Jenkins file last week, which is just a, a file, a test file. Then we just name it Jenkins file. You know, no dot. There's no dot sh no dot yamo or dot anything just jenkins file and that's the name that you know jenkins we will be looking for so jenkins will scan our github for the name then whatever script that was there jenkins will run them as the pipeline so again the pipeline the jenkins pipeline is based on groovy dsm so um that's the syntax for this groovy so some company can use like a some um, CID, CD tools can use YAMO, some maybe JSON, some, you know, different, you know, depending on the tool you are using. So again, like the one I was working with in my company recently, uh, Concord CI, that one was YAMO, you know, it's completely different from this. So it's, it took me time before I could really get my head on it. So, but again, you know, once you understand one of it, especially the popular one, in the market, so you don't you don't have to worry about other tools. So then we talk about declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline. You know the difference. Again, these are just things to know. You know, good to know. Um, you know, I mean, I've had interview asking me this before. You know that uh, what is the difference? So again, the difference is just the syntax. The syntax, the way they write them. You know, um, for like declarative pipeline, which was the one that we did. We wrote the other um, in the last class. It always starts with pipeline. The pipeline will be the one on top of it. So once you see that, you know this declarative. Whereas for scripted pipeline, it's it's node. So scripted is again. That's why I put old method here. It's not a uh, popular again. You know the new one is the declarative, which is more flexible. It's uh, it's easier to use, more flexible, and the you know the syntax is easier. To, to understand compared to scripted pipeline. 
So those are just the basic um, difference between the two. So, and then we talked about this guy yesterday, uh, I said yesterday, last class, and the, you know, um, visual code um, by Microsoft. And the, I think most of us have downloaded it already. Again, I, I explained the, the function and the, you know, the, why it is important. We, uh, as you see last week, we copy our code there, we write some script within the, it gave us a very nice syntax, you know, you know, you'll be able, you'll be able to write uh, like a script in a, um, in a easier, in an easier way uh, using this tool compared to you just writing it and maybe Vim, you can use Vim editor or whatever, but you know, those are not too uh, friendly. This one automatically would be, we detect the syntax of what you are writing. For example, you are writing a Python script. It will know the syntax for Python scripts. You know, you your work will be very, very um, will be reduced a lot because you will once you put like a semicolon like this and it enter automatically it will give it a space because you know that that's what Python is looking for. Same thing with other language. You know, like uh, this Jenkins pipeline that we wrote. Terraform, when we get to Terraform as well, we're going to use all this tool to like write our scripts and Terraform and then maybe transfer it to anywhere we want to use it. But it's good for, you know, writing this thing. It's very popular again, you know, in the, in the industry. Mostly used by developer, those that write code, of course. But, you know, as a devil guy, once in a while, especially all the scripts, like uh, Jenkins file, like a uh, uh, Terraform script, or maybe, you are good, you can write like Python script. You know, these are some of the tools that you'll be looking uh, to, to use. So, and then these are some of the old class that we did, you know, uh, EC2. Again, this is very basic. I believe most of us by now, we already understand what AWS EC2 is, uh, which we'll be using to host most of our application. Um, again, you see it has CPU, memory, storage, networking, everything. So and then we talked about SSH as well in the first class, um, you know, and uh, that it's a secure way for us to connect with our server, with our EC2. You know, you have your EC2 running on Amazon, you want to connect with it. How do you connect with it? It's uh, through SSH, which is a secure way. Because if you are, what happened if you are connecting in a non-secure way, um, ACA, they can hijack your traffic. You know, as you're establishing a connection to the server on AWS, the bad guys out there can hijack it and, you know, intercept it and, uh, you know, get all your information and do crazy stuff. Again, we are talking of a, 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 um, a web application hosting a very big um, um, application, you know, so, the level of security has to be very high. You don't want anyone to just do crazy things there to just have access to it directly. And that's why it's uh, all these SSH are very, very important. You know, you want to securely connect with it because you are making the connection over the internet. But once you use SSH, it's a secure way of doing that. So example, and the clients are like application. Again, SSH client is just application, I believe, most of us have like a Git bash already, um, or maybe Putty or Item for Mac user. So I have Item on my on my uh, Mac right now. So you know I also have Git bash. I think you know I still use Git bash even at my job recently. So these things are very important to make all those connections. You know it makes it easy to do the SSH as well. So. Again, these are just revision. Then uh, this command, you know, guys, it's very important. You know, again, you see the CP I used the other day. You know, I, I believe one of the main thing that's very uh, important in Linux is, you know, understanding the directory structure, you know, how to navigate between directory. Directory, again, is a folder. Folder, once you, once you hear directory in Linux, it just means folder. So, you know, you are moving from, for example, you are moving from desktop folder to because there's no clicking here. You don't see what you are, you don't see your desktop folder, you don't see your download folder, document folder on your distance. In Linux terminal, you're not going to see that physically. So you have to know how to navigate between those directory. Okay, you have your, you download something in your document folder, 
you are inside download folder. How do you get there? So, you know, those are, I believe those are one of the basic things that is very, very important. You know, once you can navigate your way, you know, you can move, switch between different directory, you know, it's um, the rest are just some commands. You just have to like know what they do. So you don't really need to, again, you can, you see some of them, we've used them a lot. The CD, you know, every time we always use CD, you know, just to change directory, make directory to create a folder or to create a directory, you know. So LS to list, uh, remove directory to remove a, a, a directory, to remove a folder, or you can use RM to remove a file. So touch, I think uh, I use this few times to create a file, like that Jenkins file we are talking about, I can just run the command touch Jenkins file, then it will create the file called Jenkins file for me. You know, again, this is the same thing as you going to your Windows terminal and right click and just create a file. So, but uh, you are working on a terminal in a Linux environment. These are the command you need to echo. It's like a print. You know, that's why you see on the, on our Jenkins um, pipeline script, they do echo, they have the echo um, command there too, which is basically doing print. You know, echo, hello world. You know, it's just like print this for me. So, you know, DUDF, call command, Vim, we use Vim a lot, which is, you know, a, um, a test editor, you know, to edit file, to do things. So I can say Vim Jenkins file. So it will open Jenkins file for me and allow me to edit it. And there are other tools apart from Vim that they use in the market, like Nano, you know, like a Notepad. If you are on Windows environment, if you type Notepad, it, it will open Notepad for you and you can edit your file from that. So. But uh, Vim is very popular in the Linux um, environment. Wget, grep, we didn't really use this much, but it's a very powerful tool as well. Then output directory as well, PWD, to just show you your present working directory. Uh, cat command is very, very useful to like show you the content of a file. You know, like, okay, what is inside this file, cat. So copy, I used this copy last week to copy um, the Jenkins file from my computer to the Git of repository that I clone. So, you know, I just copy, I just specify the path. So you use copy uh, the, the source, then destination, copy CP source destination. Then, you know, to copy it from that point to the other place. So again, this is basically the same thing as right clicking on your computer and just say copy, then go to where you want to paste it. Then move, tab, you know, again, these are very, very, important uh, command that, uh, you know, we should be um, very familiar with, you know, there are a lot of them, but, you know, again, these are the, you know, the um, few of them are very, very important going forward. Again, you'll be learning it as you are going into, as you are using them frequently. Some of them, I don't really use it much and really sometimes I do forget like, you know, that they exist, like maybe tail head, you know, um, but uh, some, I use them a lot and, you know, it, uh, I become, it become part of me over time because I, I use Vim so much, you know, I can't, you know, like CD, you know, I can navigate CD dot dot, you know, to take you one folder up. So maybe we can run some shell script. Then we talked about IP addresses, what they are, you know, I mean, a lot of us have been hearing IP, IP, and, and uh, you know, they, it's just a way for us to identify, a unique number that allow you to identify your computer on the internet or maybe in the network, within the network. So, you know, like, um, you know, your, if you go to Google now and just type, what is my IP address? So to, to tell you the, your public IP address and that is what is, uh, what is presenting to the internet. But you also have a private IP address, which is not useful in the, uh, to the internet. So again, their IP is very broad, you know, there are so many things like subnetting, like when you start learning on, when you start reviewing AWS, um, especially the solution architect, you know, you will learn more on VPC, you know, they talk about subnet, you know, um, all those things which are very, 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 very important, you know, talk about VPC, you know, you create subnet, side block, you know, all those slash 24, slash 32, slash 18, you know, 
you should understand some of, again, it's a little bit technical. You know, there are some like mathematical computation going on there. Uh, so, but uh, again, for this class, don't really, you can learn that on your own, especially on AWA, you know, but um, we don't really need that for now in this class. Then uh, we talked about private IP address, the range, you know, um, these are the ranges for, for the IP address for private and anything outside this is a public IP address. So all these things are not routed. As you can see, most of the IP address that we use to access our server, like Jenkins server, once we install our Jenkins, you know, it's nothing like this. You will not see any one of them starting with 10.0, never. You know, maybe it will start with 53 point something, you know, it will never be a private IP address. You can't access your Jenkins server with the private IP address over the internet. So, you know, those are some of the little things to just take note. Then we talk about the port number, you know, which also a way for us to like specify a service within the server. So again, you can have a server that has 10 different application. Then, you know, obviously the server, we have one IP address that you can access it. Then for example, you now want to access a specific application within the server. For example, you want to, on the server, you install Jenkins there, you install Tomcat, you install a lot of, a lot of application there. So how will you uh, access them differently? Because they have the same IP address. So um, port number allow you to do that, to specify that, okay, I want to access Jenkins on port A0, A0. So you specify that and then, you know, you will know that, okay, you, you want, you want Jenkins, or maybe I want to, I want to uh, access um, another this thing on port 9,000. So we know that, okay, port 9,000 belong to this application, you know, so those are some of the important um, very, reports is very useful and they, um, you know, especially in the this thing. Then we talk about some common port number as you can see, whenever we try to, whenever we spin up EC2 on AWS, you see this uh, port 22, which is for uh, secure shell SSH. So, you know, it has to be open. If this is not open, you cannot connect with your server, you know. And again, these are very popular um, port number out there. You know, uh, 53 is for domain name server. You know, 80 is very popular. You know, it's for the HTTP. Um, you know, there's 443 as well, which is for HTTPS. Yes, is the last one there. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of them that are very popular and especially 053 is very popular. 22 is popular. You know, a lot of these are very popular. There are many of them, but these are the popular ones and these are defined ones. So they are custom ones like all those Jenkins that we use. We can change it. We can change it from 080 to something else, you know, but all these, they are, you can't touch them. They are default. You know, this is how it is. You know, it will always be SSH. It will always be port 22. You can't change it. You know, it's uh, it's like that. It's well known. That's why they say well known port numbers. So, but um, you know, like all those Jenkins we are doing, we can modify it. Like maybe on our application, maybe on our server, we have another application running on A0, A0. So to do that, we have to, for example, Tomcat, I think Tomcat by default, it was A0, A0, I think. I think so, yeah. So if we have Tomcat and uh, Jenkins running on the same server, it's possible. There's nothing bad there if, you, if your server is big enough. You just, you just have to make sure you modify the configuration such that Tomcat or maybe Jenkins will run in another port number. Maybe you can say, okay, Jenkins run in port 90, 90, um, 90 or maybe run in port 9,000. So, you know, you can do all those things, you know, especially when you have a lot of things going on within the, the server. So, because if you put both of them as port A0, A0, you get a conflict and you'll not be able to access any of them. So those are important things to do. Then we talk about security group on AWS, you know, um, the concept, um, then which is like a virtual, um, virtual, um, um, what do you call it? Virtual uh, security shell that kind of like protects your EC2 server in, in 
at the application level. So you can basically like a firewall. Set, firewall. Thank you. Yeah, firewall is the word I want to use. So yeah, like um, a virtual firewall where you can specify the a port number that you want to open to the public. You know, like most of the lab we've been doing, we open ports 22 to everyone, which is 000 slash zero, which is for everybody can access it on port 22. You know, and that's why we have to use all those like uh, key as well, like security key. With that key, you know, if they don't have the key, even you open the port, they will not be able to connect with that. So, but again, these are some things in the real world, you don't want to open port 22 to everybody to zero zero like this. So it's, uh, I mean, when you are working in a production environment where you have application hosting, <laughs> your life application like that is serving the customer, you don't want to open the ports like this. So, but these are just for like uh, practice purpose, you know, in those cases, you can specify different things there. You know, you can specify maybe load balancer or whatever, which are again, you know, once you start learning your AWS, you learn more and all these things. May, you know, just know it's a firewall that kind of like protects your EC2, not just EC2, there are other services on AWS that use um, security group as well. So you can open any port, any port that's not open. Again, you know, if you install your server and you do not open port A0A0 here, you know, it will, you will never be able to access it. You know, you can't access it until you, you add the, the port. You add the port and you specify that A0A0, I want to open it to, to the public before you can access this thing. These are very important. They like, you know, most interview we ask you very a lot of question, you know, on security group. So it's a very important concept, you know. So then we talk about Git, which is a source code management. And then we um, explain how it is used to, um, it, um, it's an application that is used to like um, store a, a code for the developers and then to collaborate and they allow them to make changes in the code and integrate it with like, a, like Jenkins server or anything. So it's a very, very, very powerful, they call it version control or source code management, you know, again, it's, uh, you see how we've been using Git, you know, that's where our code is, you know, anybody can, I can give you my uh, Git repository, you know, you can clone it and see all my, all the code in my GitHub, you can make changes there, push it back there, if I give you permission to do that. So, you know, it's allow collaboration within team and it's very, very, very important in the, in the um, DevOps world and the even tech, tech generally like software development, because this, this is the concept, this is the, this is the place where it's allow all those developers to work centrally, you know, to collaborate and they, you know, make changes. Because again, we are talking of a big uh, code running like hundred thousands of lines. So it's not like one developer sitting down, writing everything from scratch. So, you know, a lot of people working on it, 10 developer, 15 developer doing different parts in the project. So, you know, source code management allow that collaboration to be very smooth and they, you know, make anybody that make changes, you know, this is the person that make the change and they, this is what the person change. You can track everything, you can do so many things with it. And one of the big thing is you can integrate it with like a, um, uh, like a Jenkins for CICD pipeline and the, you know, just like we've been doing the class. So again, these are the architecture and they call it distributed version control. So, you know, the repository, these are what we do when we do git pull, you know, git push, you know, we push it, we have our local repository here. You know, again, when you do git clone, that's when you like copy the repository, you like copy the folder. You know, the repository is just like a like a folder you create in the in the GitHub, you know, where you store those application, those code and everything. So then you can clone it. When you run that Git clone, that's when you now copy it into your local computer, right on your computer. If you if you're running it on your Windows, you will see it right on your Windows, you know, right where you copy it, where where you clone it. So and you can make changes there. Then you push it back if you have permission to do that. 
you know, you push it back, do everything back and forth. So it's very, very important and very powerful in the system. So we talked about some common Git command. I love them, you know, but uh, you know, Git, you can learn Git for like, you know, it can take a week to really, especially when you work in it in a, in a large scale, you know, um, it could be very complicated sometimes. So but these are common, um, common command, git init, git clone, which we use a lot, git add, you know, which we also use it a lot, git commit, git pull, we use this git push as well, then git branch, you know, to create a branch. Uh, we didn't really talk much on branching, which is another very interesting uh, concept of git. So, but I think I showed briefly how to like create a branch. You can have different branch because what happened is that, in the real world, you know, you don't want everybody to be pushing. You see, whenever we do git push, we say git push origin master. You know, in the real world, you don't want to push directly to your master branch. Master branch is considered to be like a perfect, perfect branch in git. You know, so you don't want to mess with it. So what they do is that they will create like a branch within the master. So branch is like you just take copy of the of the main branch which is the master branch you copy it and create like a, a a separate branch and you said developer will be working on this um this branch that you created so they will make every change within that you know because again you don't want to mess with your master branch so that develop branch you create or any you can give it a name so they can work with that and they, once they are done you know then Maybe someone can review what they do before they merge it to the master. Because once you merge it to the master, master may be the right, the main one that we that we run the application all the way to the uh, maybe um, to deployment stage. So you don't want them to be pushing the code directly to master branch. So that's why branching, you know, strategy. It's another interesting thing to look out for. But these are some of the command that are very popular that we use git push pull commit you know add clone and then you know just get familiar with it i believe most of us by now have a git sub accounts and you can create a repository from it you know clone it you know write something in the distance just create a file hello or you know just maybe microsoft doc or whatever it doesn't matter just create a file put it inside that git push it back to your GitHub and see that if you see it there. Um, then we talk about CI CD continuous integration here, you know, which is the part that uh, talked about committing the code frequently from the developer. And these are some of the basic pipeline that we did, you know, um, they push the code to GitHub, you know, build it, test it, you know, this keep going, going on, on and on, on and on. You want developer to push every every single change they make. You know, if it is just one line of the code, you want them to push it immediately. And this one, Jenkins will take care of all these stages, build, test, uh, report, or anything. You know, Jenkins will run everything. So um, they don't have to worry about any problem or this thing. They just have to write the code and push it to GitHub. And, you know, every the magic will start from there. So again, Jen, um, Virtual control GitHub is like a center of a, a continuous integration process. So then uh, the continuous deployment part of it is when we deploy the application, um, which could be to different environment. Maybe you want to deploy it directly to your production environment or, you know, put it in another environment. So that's, these are the concept of CICD. And if you Google DevOps, you know, just Google Develop. I'm sure these are what some of the image that you see as the uh, uh, in your first search. You know these things are very very critical to develop. You know this one just say code. You know after code build. You know it's just telling you that this process is automated. Everything from A to from A to, A to Z. You know from the beginning. This is the beginning coding part of it. Which developer will be doing you know, and Jenkins will take care of all the rest, you know, to some extent. There could be other tools as well, like monitoring or whatever. So, but again, 
you know, this is the concept of CICD, you know, what DevOps is all about. You know, you want all this process to be automated, to be done in a continuous way. And that's why they call it continuous integration, continuous de deployment. So, but, um, you know, it's a culture, it's very important, you know. Again, if you don't understand this thing, go read more about it. So maybe, you know, again, sometimes it takes, even me, it took me time to really under, understand them, you know, in the, in the real life uh, scenario and, and stuff. I try to explain as much as possible, but again, you know, you may, if you consult Google again, okay, what's a CICD, you know, read more, you know, understand things and then, uh, but again, these are the basic and then, uh, and then uh, we talked about common CICD tools. You know, again, you don't need to cram all these things. These are just good to know stuff. You know, if you have a interview um, asking you which one you use, Jenkins is the one, nobody we, I've never used any of these before, you know, so any of other tools before. So because Jenkins is very, very popular and it's by far very popular. So there are other tools as well. And again, even if the company is using different one, like maybe the company is using Bamboo or maybe Travis, you know, one, once you know Jenkins, any company believe that you'll be able to know any of this, you know. Again, the syntax is just the different things. Both of them use like all this code. I believe uh, Bamboo use Yamo, I believe, I think. Then um, Cycle CI2, you know, some of them use like a YAML, uh, YAML uh, format, and they, um, some of them have their like a custom format they use. So again, if you know one, you are good. You don't need to bother yourself about the rest, but they are good to know that these are what we have for CICD tools. They will talk about Jenkins, it's open source. It's very popular in the market, it's written in Java. You know, it works based on plugin. As you can see, we have some of all these plugins that we install uh, during the class, you know, before we can, before we can deploy, before we could deploy to Tomcat. If you remember, we installed this plugin, they call deploy to container, deploy to container. If we, if we didn't do that, we will not be able to use Jenkins to, um, to deploy to Tomcat server. So these are some of the things that Jenkins does and why it's very popular. So there are a lot of plugins out there, a lot that it can do different things, you know, depending on the use case, what the company wants to do. You know, maybe the company doesn't want to build with Maven, you know, maybe they have another uh, tool they want to use. You know, you get the plugin, you just search for the plugin, install it to Jenkins, then, you know, you'll be able to use that particular tool. So the plugin are very, very, they are like the center of um, um, Jenkins, like the main part of Jenkins. And again, this is how it works. If you remember from our distance, we have um, our developer, although we don't have a developer, but you know, we make the changes to the GitHub repository. You know, we automatically, we set up Jenkins to, to pick it up automatically and build it and run the test and do the deployment. So, you know, Jenkins cover, pretty much cover all these things for us in our case, so, and deploy it as well. So again, Jenkins is very, very important. It's the center of most of all those things. So then we talked about Maven. You know, we said Maven allows us to build our application, especially Java application, which they use, and they use a concept they call POM, you know, which is um, project object uh, module. And then the POM, as you can see, we have a file in our Maven folder, which we call POM.xml. You know, again, you don't really need to know too much on Maven. Just understand that they use it to build a Java-based application, you know, and that's what we use. If you remember in our pipeline, we have that script that say Maven package, Maven clean install package, or maybe clean install package. You know, we are invoking Maven at that point. We are telling Maven to, package this application for us to build this application and package it. So, you know, so depending, there are other building tools out there. JUnit is one of them, you know, depending on the on the requirement, on the application that they are building, the Maven is very popular in building on Java-based application. And once you build it, that's when we get the Wi-Fi, 
you know, which I talked about too, you know, you, you can get Wi-Fi, Jafi, depending on, on, the, on the kind of application, you know, you get the artifacts after you build, you perform this build stage. So good to know, again, we talk about Tomcat, you know, which is like a cat, just like the image shows. I think um, if you if you read about it, it's uh, I don't know maybe the person that developed it is from uh, as a cat or something like that. I don't know. So, but um, Tomcat is very very popular web application. As you can uh, as you remember during our lab, you know we we deploy our application to Tomcat. Then we access it on Tomcat because that's the only way we can see the application. So we make the deployment, we build the application, then we deploy it. We have our Tomcat running a separate server. If you remember, you know, we install it on a separate server, then we use the IP address and the port number to access it. So most of most websites you see out there that you, you log in might be coming from Tomcat and you wouldn't know. So they may be hosting it on Tomcat and the you know, it's uh, because there are a lot of applications out there running on Tomcat server. There, there are other uh, web-based applications as well, you know, um, but uh, Tomcat is a very popular one. And then um, again, the installation part that we did in the class is, is nothing to worry about in terms of, you know, again, you know, if your job requires you to use Tomcat, to install Tomcat, you know, you look it up, through documentation, how they install Tomcat. The main thing is understand how it works, how you can integrate it within your pipeline, you know, and they do automatic de deployment. So, and then what it does, those things are very important. Um, and again, Tomcat is very important. It's very popular again, about uh, 1,007 companies report, uh, reportedly use Tomcat server, Apache Tomcat in the tech stack, including eBay, Accenture, um, I don't know some of all these things, but you know, there are a lot of them that use Tomcat server, you know, a lot of big application you see there. So um, again, this is how we use our Tomcat. If you remember, you know, we build, uh, our Jenkins build the application through Maven. Maven also do the packaging for us. You know, Maven build it, package it, then we deploy it to Tomcat, then we're able to access it from Tomcat here. You know, the Wi-Fi is, the, is what you deploy so, to Tomcat. So we're able to access it from Tom, Tomcat directly here. So this is just, you know, for us to understand the concept. And again, this is a basic pipeline for, um, um, just for our understanding sake again, you know, GitHub, this is similar to what we did a little bit, you know, um, from Git push, you know, you remember once you do git push origin master, you know, automatically our pipeline will kick off at that point. You know, we don't need to do anything. Jenkins, Jenkins already know that we make, we just push a change to GitHub, then it will trigger the process automatically. And that's what you want in a real life uh, scenario. You know, you want everything to be done automatically. You don't want anybody to go to Jenkins and be, uh, it's a build now that you see. You don't want to do that. You want Jenkins to build automatically whenever there's a change in the in the code. And uh, this is the basic of CI/CD. You see, in this case, uh, compile, build stage. You know, test. You can do some testing. You can do some deployment here. You can deploy to staging. Then you know you can have your QA people to to check before you you deploy to production, you know, different company with the way, different ways they do that. But these are very popular. You can do automatic deployment to staging uh, uh, stage, but you don't want to deploy automatically to production because again, production is a very vital environment or, you know, that you don't want to mess with. So, because if there's anything that's not right within the code, you know, and then you put you push it to production. <laughs> it's a it's a big problem, and then you know companies don't want that. So they always do like extra step, extra testing, like manual testing. You know, quality assurance people they will test it at this stage, make sure that everything is or work the way they want it to do, to work before they now push it to um, production. And then. These are important concepts to uh, understand 
the way how this thing works. So today we're just going to we're not going to install Jenkins from scratch again. But um, you know, we say whoever is stuck with any problem, then uh, we create a Maven project. You know, some of the things we just did, then we did. Uh, we're going to do like a Jenkins pipeline again and go over some of the things we we work with. So, um, any any question? I think uh, Bar said he had a question the other time. Then we, I'm going to ask whoever have any problem, stuck with anything, then you know let them, um, so they can talk and you know maybe share their screen, and then you know we can see how we can help. So any questions so far? Bye, are you there? Bye, you are you there or are you sleeping? I'm here, bro. <laughs> yeah. What what was the question? Uh actually I I was able to get my stuff. Sorry, I have too many questions that I've piled up here. But let me just start with the first one. Yeah, okay. The first one is that I was trying to I make uh, some changes to my reciprocity, the one that I have on my GitHub. Then so I was now trying to rehard it and commit the change. So, but I was trying to like clone it again. So I I was not supposed supposed to clone. I was just supposed to git add and continue. Mm -hmm. So now I have I have now I, I now make mistake. I now uh um push a whole i mean you know i create a reciprocity then i now copy the whole reciprocity then i posted it again in the reciprocity as in the one that, that i have before now now okay. i want to now edit it now mm -hmm. i want to delete the files i mean the directory inside that particular one that i've created but i'm not i'm not able to to get it sorted out so I um, don't know whether you can help me out or something. Yeah, I, I think what you can do is you if you clone it again, you know, the repository as, as it is, you mm -hmm. know, then delete on your computer, delete what you want to delete there, then commit, then push it back. So then the one you, you said you have um you put like a repository inside another repository. Mm -hmm. so in, the, in that case, you will have this um they call there's this file. You know, which is dot git file. You know, whenever you create a a git repository, you know it's a hidden file. You're not going to see it unless you run like ls dash l. Yeah. So you will see dot git file. But yeah, if the dot git file is twice there within your git repository, it will give you a problem. So you need to remove one of the dot git file because you have two repository overlapping now. So you need to like manually remove the um the one of the dot git file before then you remove any file you want to remove any file or folder remove it manually maybe by just uh, rm command or um uh, rm and dir or whatever you know just remove it with the remove command and the, then then push it back you know push it back to the distance but you make sure you don't have the dot git file twice if you have the dot git file in another folder Another I have it. Again. I have it. So, yeah. Can I? Is I? Is it possible for me to scare, to just share my screen? Yeah, share your screen. Let's see if we. Again, yeah. Git can be very messy if you if you don't relay, you will get so much conflict and the things will not relay. So, but um, yeah, let's see. You have disabled participant. Oh, okay, okay. Let me let me enable that. Uh, uh, Okay, oh, no, suspend, no. Allow participant to share screen, okay. Yeah, try now. Yes, screen. Yeah, share, okay. Yeah, are we together now? Can you see my, my git bash? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so now, okay. Yeah. So now, I you see, uh, yeah, I see that two folders there. Yes. Are they the same? No, I mistakenly it is this the same thing. I mistakenly uh um clone and hatch the same folder in the particular 
reciprocity. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, okay. Then just let remove me, it now. Run, let me show you. Okay, let me yeah, show you here. Run a I'm lesson, not, lesson. Okay. I'm not able to, to move that. I've even tried to Google online. Can you see now? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what's good. Go to your terminal again. Let's see. Okay. It's a tough. Uh, say, yeah, cd dot dot. Just go up one directory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then ls. Yeah, then remove uh, that uh, first one, RM, RM. Okay, I should remove it. Yeah, RM dash RF. Okay, dash RF. Yeah, then the name of the file, the first, yeah. Okay, then LS now. Okay, then do git add now. Dot, then git commit. Git commit. Yeah, then git git push. Git push. Yeah, then refresh your GitHub now. Let's see. Refresh your refresh your repo now. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It has gone now. Okay, yeah. Thank I'm you, sure you thank you be. for the. <laughs> I've I've been actually battling with it for for a long time. Yeah, I mean those things are just you. I mean you just have to just yeah just do the basic remove yeah, and it will go. Yeah. So okay. Um, anyone with uh, stock in any process again, any stage. And another thing that I want to add. Mm. The last time, you know, we, all of us install Apache. Yeah. Now we now, we now install, we now did the, the, but the last, like three classes back now, yeah. what we did was we installed Tomcat on yeah. the different server. Then we, we install, uh, then we have our um, Jenkins running on the different server. Yeah. So we now integrate the Jenkins with the Tomcat. So that yeah. any uh, any update that we make on our uh, GitHub is being updated and both on on Jenkins and on our Tomcat uh, server. I want to ask: Is yes. there any? I've been hearing Apache stuff. Apache is the for first Apache that we that we install. Yeah. What is the difference between that and Tomcat? Um. I, I, they are different. I know they are different, but uh, I think that one, it's uh, maybe probably um, lightweight or I really don't know the difference. But I know both of them, that the one we installed in our first class, it's, um, I know it's lightweight and um, I don't think they use it to really host like a real, real application like that. So, but okay. sincerely, I don't really, the Tomcat is more popular to deploy. I don't think we can deploy our Wi-Fi in that one. I think they just use it for, I will also check it out, the difference between the two of them, but I'm sure okay. they are different. They are both owned by Apache, but the other okay. one is for, is Tomcat. So yeah, but, yeah, that's a good question. But that other one is not that popular like that. It's just like, a, yeah, it's not that popular, popular in the main distance. Man, okay. I think I've okay. seen an article on that before. Okay. Uh, yeah. And okay. And and another thing that I <laughs> that I faced, you know, mm -hmm. I've been using my my Amazon account, uh, AWS account for more than what is it is should be going to one year now, not up to okay. one year. But mm -hmm. I've just been running T2 micro. Most time <laughs> I just leave my server, all the servers running. So and I'll see they sent me a mail today that. I'm paying eight dollar. <laughs> yeah, then you check um check your, I mean check your okay. this thing. Yeah, check your billing um dashboard and see. Yes, and see, this and see month what you're alone, This month alone, I'm I'm I'm. Uh, hello. Yeah. This 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 month alone, I'm uh owing them 
3.9, but I see what I'm running is two to micro, not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happened is that they charge you for um, the volume, the volume of the, because each application has a, and it's, it also have limit. You know, I think they have a number of hours that you, that you will be within free tier. So if you run it more than those hours, and they, um, I think they will charge you. Yeah, I, think I think they also- I think for a year or something. I don't know. How many hours? I think for a year, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, for a year. It has gone beyond that. Uh, no, I'm not even video. using it up to a year now. I started I'm, using it in November last year. I think oh, sometimes uh, you have to stop the... Maybe there's something... You stop, stop start from running. Like, maybe if you're not using it, you can just stop it. Mm, that one, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That yeah. one, so I think, apart from that, just like on my um, Azure, if you're using maybe a dedicated IP address, it's a separate service in charge of hope. There will be some additional services I use because since the last class, my own Tomcat and Jenkins servers have been running. I didn't close it. I intentionally left it to check. As long as you're not running other services attached, or you're not exceeding the maximum volume supported, mm. you'll still be free. But if you exceed it, there are other services you can have, uh, instead of the IP address changing, you can have a dedicated IP address. The IP address is always constant, even whether you restart or not. So those no, services, you are, if, if you attach you elastic, attached. they call it elastic IP. Elastic IP yeah. If you attach it, they will charge you. They charge for that. Mm -hmm. By default, they, we're not using elastic IP, actually. Elastic IP will, will charge you money. But the one we are using, it's not, we, we, we don't use elastic. It's random IP. That's why when you stop it, when you stop your server, you start it again, it will it's give you another IP it's address. It's so yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. You know, sometimes some people may mistakenly okay. do some things. That yeah, maybe maybe it does that. I don't think. Uh, you you just are, go and check. You go and check yeah. all the services you run. Exactly. And you go and check which one. Go to yeah, your yeah. billing dashboard. Yeah, I can, you see the I, one. I, I can show you all these things. Well, I have stopped. I have stopped using that particular account. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to use the account. I mean, then, yeah. um, sorry, I want to ask. Uh, you asked about um, Apache and uh, Tomcat. Okay. Yeah. So I just went everything to solve because I, I do web development. So mm, okay. owns both uh, Tomcat and um, sorry, uh, yeah, Apache owns, owns both um, servers. But Apache web server, what it does is um, it's basically for serving more like um, static websites. Yeah. yeah. But you want to de deploy dynamic web server. Yeah. Like you want to have some Java applications, yeah. Like all these Jenkins, you have to use Tomcat because Tomcat yeah. can handle more dynamic content. Yeah. So, but you want to just do basic website, the WordPress yeah. website, just basic, yeah. no serious yeah. application yeah. attached. Use a basic Apache website. Yeah. So okay, like a, yeah, like a one page website. site, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, like yes, one page use site Apache. Like, yeah. like, you want to develop applications that control, like this Jenkins, this way, um, the DevOps, for instance, you have files that are constantly changing. That needs yeah. to be picked and the server runs them for yeah. You cannot use Apache for it. The yeah. server will fail. Just be seeing issues and the server will just be running out. So use Tomcat, which is dedicated for that. So mm. that's the major difference between mm. Okay. Thank you, David, for that. that input. Yeah. No. Okay. Um any 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 pro who is having who is still having a problem? Um setting up maybe EC2, trying to connect, install Jenkins, you know, because um, if, you can, if, if you don't install Jenkins, you'll not be able to proceed um, installing Maven and other stuff. So, or maybe Git, if you have a problem with Git, you know, the stuff, let us know. So that as much as possible, if we can be on the same page, you know, we keep going from there. Anybody, I'm anybody trying to do? work on my I'm trying to work on the git today to install the git. So um, I tried the same process, everything, and um, but I keep get, getting different results. And I check if the git git version is, is running on my system already, and I think I see it's okay. But when I try to when I try the when I try the when I try to run some application on it, like the normal what you write on to that you thought us is not working. Maybe you, I can share my screen so you yeah, can yeah, let, I mean. yeah, let's see, please. Yeah. 
Okay. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. So, we I think I've cleared some commands. So I run it to, I run it to LS is fine to LS, and you can see I check to I try to check for gate where I type gate space dash dash version to check if the git version is on there and it's fine so from there i tried the next command like i tried to i, I was trying to create a file mm -hmm. on, on the git on the git log so it can so it, i can see it on my repository on yeah. git yeah. so but all the command i was trying it's not working it's like mm, like now because I, you are in a root. I don't know how you get into root directory. If you once you see that slash, uh, can you um, can you connect back to your server now? Or maybe I think you should be able to it's, run something. It's not in his, it's not in his server now. Yeah, it's does, not in the server. Does he, does he need to install? He just wants to get something from GitHub. Uh, yeah, yeah. Git mm, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think you can run the command directly. Here. You don't. You probably don't need to even connect to your server. So well, just I run that I touch SSA, now. I run the SSA that's going to talk to this. So I can we, IP. We, we can hear you. Okay, I said I. I think I go through the server. That's when I went to the Ubuntu IP. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were connected before. I can see from the history you were connected. But what I'm saying is you were in the root directory. That's why it's giving you. And that's why when you run LS, you see all this file you are saying, these are the root um, um, Linux. Um, when you're in a root directory, you know, there's a root directory, there's a root uh, user, which is different. When you're in root directory, that's when you see all this bin file and you need extra permission to like run some uh, command there. So I don't know how you get there. Once, if you CD, CD, then slash, then it will take you to root directory, which is um, like a, for administrative yeah. purpose mostly. So um, you don't really work in root directory most time unless you are doing stuff. So I think that's why you get in that error. But run that command again, let's see. Do you see, see something, right? Yeah, just put, uh, press your up arrow command. Okay. And let's see. Up arrow. Yeah, okay, enter. Okay. Nothing happens. Yeah, just wait. You have to run the first one before you run. No, you 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 only run the first one once. You don't have to run it every time. Okay. You have your server running, or you shut it down. Okay, let me go and see. I think I shut my server down. Let me go. Also, okay. let us see that what is. Let us ls into the download. Let us see what is there. Yeah, the the key L okay, ls does ls. Oh. Okay, I'm coming. Let me refresh my server. Uh, I think my is so is stuff. Okay, stop working. Okay, I think this one I'm using. Let me just keep starting. Starting. <clears throat> Okay, you said I should go to the uh, okay, yeah. I should LS into the download, right? Yeah, just LS. Let's see what, what you got. This was, this was, uh, I've mm. got the key for the EC2 pin. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think you are good with that. Okay, so is your server up and running now? Let me check now. It should be running now. It should be running, running, running. Yeah, it's fine now. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you stop it before? If you stop it, then this. No, I just stop it. Not like just few minutes ago. Yeah, you need to copy. Account. You need to copy that command again. That ssh. Oh, okay, to start again. Yeah, copy that oh. ssh. I because now you will have different IP address since you just started it. 
the copy that example, the one that says ssd.i, that's the only one you need now. Mm. You're, you already have permission to the... Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, run 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 that command you you you're talking about now. Version. Yeah, get version should be there. At, uh, yes, then, uh, so I was trying to write dodge, dodge like um hello dot s mm -hmm. <laughs> It works. It works. It works. <laughs> I think I'm confused. There, you see. I was like, I was, I wanted to write like, I wanted to write these L O S H and move in into that into my file, which is that midday, and to now go to my repository and go and check it, run it there. It's gonna appear there. That was what I was trying to do. Uh, is this uh this midday? Is it your Git repository that you clone? Yeah, on my let me go and let me yeah, that's wait on my GitHub. And then CD there, then you know you can create a file yeah, there. This is my GitHub. You see the there, there, guys. If that's your distance, CD there, then go inside there and create that file. Or you know you okay. can just move any of this file there if you can if you know how to do the okay. move. Command. I, that's right. I use I use move the file L O S H to the middle. But let me just CD into the middle. Yeah, see CD into CD. yeah CD. Then let's let's see what is there. Okay. You don't have any. Yeah, create a file there now. Okay, okay, okay. That make that it react. Yeah. Uh, no, just touch. Oh, oh, oh. Touch. Oh, okay. Make make directory is when you want to create a folder. Oh, okay. Touch. Yeah, just give it any name. It could be dot right. sh or dot txt or. Okay, I think txt is not working on the. It will work. It will work. Just use it. Let's see. I dot and I write the media. Right? No, no. What are you doing? No, you can't write anything. Just, just that. Yeah, that's it. Enter. So, okay. what do you want to write in this file? Or what are you trying to do? You want to put something there? Yeah, but I think I think that midday is the file, and that which one is the file? I don't. Midday midday is a folder. Is a folder. Wait, okay. um, um, Olu, what you want to do is to move lo.sh into midday, right? Yes. Okay, it is simple. Go back. CD dot dot. Go back. Then move. Like the way we have done it before, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The file that you want to move, like hello, uh -huh. yes. No, that's not correct. The just uh -huh. then where you want to move it to, just press M and completely with tab. Yes. Okay. Then it should move. That was what I was trying to write. So then, can I check it now? Yes. Yes. Let me check. So I should see L O S H now if it's there. Oh, you see a lot of files are there. I is there. I think I no, need to wait, wait. You don't move them. What you have just moved is L O dot. Then CD into that midi. You are not inside that folder. You need to one thing you need to know. You need to understand where you are in the Linux server. For now, if you are looking at your terminal now, you see you are in your this is a home directory. You are in like the base, you know. So for you to see anything inside midi. Inside, maybe there's a folder. So you want to see the content of what is there. First, you can do LS MIDI or you CD into MIDI first. Then you do LS. So you can use either one. You can do LS MIDI, then it will show you the con the distance of MIDI or you can CD into MIDI, just enter. Then this is the file that you move. This was the one you created. Or you can CD into MIDI, then just run. LS. So, so that, like these two L O S H now, I I text is in media already now. 
Yes, yes, they are there. They are seed into midday, then use um, seed into midday again. Yeah, seed it, enter, then LS, run LS. They are there. It's the same thing with what you just did the other time. The two files, they are there. Okay, okay. Okay. So if I want to have it on my repository now, if I refresh, it should be there, right? <laughs> no, you need no, to do you, have, you see, I don't think you, you, um, you understand what he's trying to do. You are trying to take something from your Git, right? Yeah, I, you know, like what we did in class, like we run some application on this GitHub and we have it reciprocated, like we push it and have it on our... Yeah, on yeah. Our, yeah. Yeah, what uh, you if I don't know, run ls 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 space dash la. I want to know if this is a uh, git repository. Yeah, this is a git. Okay, run git add git add. Okay, git add git dot the enter. Okay. And then run git commit. Minus M. Space. OK. Space. Yeah, then column, then uh, code. Code, OK. And then first commit. You can write anything. You can just write first commit. OK. No. Oh. First. And then enter. Okay. And then do git push. You can just do git push alone. Git push. Okay. And enter. And then provide your username, your git username. Okay. 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 Enter. Yeah. Then provide the password. It will not appear on the terminal. They just know you are typing. Yeah. Then you say, uh, go to your GitHub, refresh it. You should see that two files there now. And that's how you push into Git. You, you put things. What you did, you clone it. That's, where, that's why you see that MIDI folder coming to your computer. You yes, did, you, it's there you, now. Yeah, you've already did git clone. Now you put a file there. How do you make that file to be in the git or which is a remote repository? And that's why that's why you have to go through this process. Git add, process. git, git add, commit. Git commit yeah. git if you don't do that, commit. it will just be your local computer. The changes are not done in the remote in the git hub, mm -hmm. and you want the changes to be in the git hub. So you need to do that process every time you make any change. So if you make any change in this file again now in this midday folder maybe you create another file or you edit a file there you need to do that process again so that okay. you so get, 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 get push and username password yeah and yeah yeah so that will that will do the this thing so those are commands you should be very very familiar with familiar so with okay. working with okay. okay all right thank you I think that's what I've got now no problem so any any anybody with any other this thing again? Excuse me, sorry. I let me just ask. Well, I I was waiting for maybe I did not see the, the shell script that you use in your pipeline. Like I was just trying to the last class that we did, so that maybe we we can also. I think I shared it in this. Um, and someone shared it on the, let me see if I can share it again. Mm, I think I shared it on the, um, in the in the comment section. I think this is it. Comment section. Mm. No, that was, um, yeah, that was loud. I, I already shared it again now, so you can okay. just. Okay, okay, I think I have it now. Just make the edit changes there. Yeah, I have it. Thank you. Yeah. 
No problem. Any everyone out there, uh, Jenkins server running. Mm -hmm. If you don't have your Jenkins server, you know you can use the script I, the one I created, to like spin up your Jenkins server. Then I will also also show how to like run that script. Let me see if I say if I. Please, I think I, I think I, I need, I will need that script. Okay. Um, please. Okay, I. I just shared it now. So, you know, just, um, again, I will show how to use it um, now. Let me see. Okay. You sent to, is it the two? No, no, uh, the one end with dot .sh is the, is the one to install Jenkins. The first one is for the pipeline. I don't think you are, you are there now. I don't know. Yeah. Can you stop uh, sharing? Um, okay, okay. So, um, nobody has a problem uh, question again. Okay, so I will for the for the pipeline again. I will just show how how to um, for the Jenkins uh, this thing, the script I just shared. I will show how to use it um, in so, case. So we should not bother ourselves yet on how to write script, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can practice with it, but don't, yeah, don't bother much again. Don't really, yeah, just on not bother yet. Yeah, don't bother yet. We'll still be working on that script. We'll still be, we're still going to add some stages with it. But, you know, the one that we have now, you know, it's good. We, you have it in the GitHub. Then uh, you can just edit it and just Kenneth, yeah. Isn't um shell scripting part of the like um uh skills that you need to yeah it is so it is shell scripting is and again you know you don't <laughs> it's um I don't for a starter so I can't see the starter, files here though you can see it I share oh. it on the in the Did you share it share to private or public I share it to the award yeah, you are saying what? You said for a starter. Yeah, for a starter. I mean, if you can learn shell scripting, that would be cool too. You know, it's also very disable. I think Python is still a bit friendlier than uh, this thing. In most cases, most job they will ask you that at least one scripting language. So they will specify shell okay, scripting. Okay, it's all about shell scripting. Is all about like writing code, like. Yeah, shell scripting is like this. Are you, can you guys? Yeah, see yeah, yeah. Script? I understand what shell scripting is. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's basically this is the script I want to like use to install my Jenkins now. Even for me too, I for my shell scripting, I am still a little bit not to compare to Python. I can work with Python very well. But you know, some of all these commands that we are doing to they are shell command. Like uh, you know, but when you are doing scripting, you use advanced one. You you use like like all those like conditional, you use looping, like, okay, for, you know, you use some advanced um, Linux command, which are like shared commands, sorry, not Linux, but you know, they okay. are like, but um, like, you know, if statement, you can use conditional statement that, okay, if this one does this, do this, S, do this, you know, you have to understand the syntax, which is, um, you know, it's like learning, learning coding somehow, not coding like that, but scripting. But um, if you can learn it on your own, it's, uh, it's good to have, nice to have that. Um, I wouldn't say you should stretch too much on that. Not everyone knows it, even people that are that will. I can do some basic, uh, this one, maybe 10, 20 lines, I can write script. No, no more than that, but I can't really write advanced shell script like that. But for your Python, again, you know, if you say, okay, I know Python, how to write with Python script, you know, you can, you'll be good. I, I think Python is more friendlier than shell scripting. The shell scripting, it could be, especially when you are, when you are doing some, some advanced um, automation and stuff like that. But it's very useful, very, very, very important. If you, if you, if you can know it, I can share some link on, you know, where you can learn some share script and then um, yeah um, that would be beneficial yeah please, yeah please mm, now we do that and, and can i please do you have any like where we can learn like a little bit about python any maybe from udemy that we can buy or anything yeah yeah i have i will i will send please, that too 
because okay. I wanted to buy some days ago, but I wanted to be sure the one I'll be buying. So okay, be... okay, yeah, I have this again. If you go to Udemy, you see thousands of bits. I have this Indian guy, you yes. know, his own is very good because what happened is that Python is used for a lot of things, you know, like uh, you know, a lot of different things. So you don't want to get into learning Python to do artificial intelligence and you using it Not to do machine learning. Cloud. Exactly. So you need to know what you are. So this guy course really focused on, you know, the main, like for automation, which they use it, which they use and develop, like, you know, Boto3 on AWS, um, some of the modules, Python modules, because Python is very heavy modules. So, you know, some of the common modules they use in automation, which are the main thing that you need to know, especially as a DevOps guy, you don't really have to, I mean, you have to know the basic, like, okay, variable, the looping, you know, the conditional, the, um, um, all the, uh, all the, what do you call it again? Uh, all the string, um, different uh, structures of the, um, um, structures of, I, don't, I, I can't remember what they call it. So you just need to know all those basic ones, then, you know, know the application, which is very important, you know, how to run it and stuff like that. Um, I, I've written some Python script before, but um, um, okay, let me let me show this. Uh, so again, this is can you guys see my screen now? So this is the one we did last week. So um, let me so let me just show you the basic um, how this thing looks like. Uh, shell scripting for those that again, you know, you remember the one I wrote the other time. Where's my stuff? Okay. This is it. Okay, let me open it. Open with uh, code, visual code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys see the see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. So again, these are like what the cost scripting, you know. So be it's uh, the air we're not really using a lot of stuff like that, you know. Just just this. Be again, it's very powerful in the sense that you know we can. Just a click of the button, you can install five applications at a time. Just running this uh, script alone. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's very, very useful. And here, you know, I'm just using sleep. Sleep is just pause. So there are a lot of things like, you know, if you want to run like if statement in, uh, in share now, it will be something like this. If <clears throat> you see this already completed it for me, then you have a space in between. If, okay. um, so the sentence is kind of weird compared to like Python. So you say if, um, let me say, can is equal to, if you want to say equal to, you write minus EQ like this, you know, it's very, it's a little bit very distant, equals to maybe 30, you know, then you have, a, you have to leave a space, then you use dead here, yeah? then you go to the next command with a space, you know, the sentence is kind of very, you know, then you put what you want it to do. You put there, echo, uh, this is echo, sorry, echo, you know, uh, this is it. Echo is just print. This is it, you know, then you go to the next one, you know, then you, you say uh, S, you know, then you go to another terminal echo, you know, stuff like this, the sentence is a little bit, compared to Python, Python is very straightforward. Um, <laughs> this this is not, so this is how to write like a set script then. If you want to end it, you end it with FI. You have to end it with, if you open with if, you have to end it with FI. So you have to follow some of all this syntax. And if, you, if four is less than, you can say less than, um, I think it's LE. The use, you know, the syntax is not that cool like that. Then if you want to declare, if you have a variable here, yeah, I can say, I don't know. Okay, so here yeah, I can say, okay, variable, we want to declare variable. I can say name equals to, then, you know, name equals to um, Kenneth, you know, then if you would not want to like, Call the name, you now say that, okay, echo, you know, you now use like a dollar sign like this, echo, you know, name, you know. So here you just re referencing the variable. 
you say that okay echo connect so but this is how to like make reference to um like a variable in share so the pattern is not unlike uh, python python is still very a little bit more you know but these are some of the basic things you can do with a share script you know you can run a lot of all these things i have this uh, nice video by this guy you know i will share if you have time you know those are like 14 hours video <laughs> or maybe 10 hours so but it's very explanatory you know you learn a lot of stuff so especially you know understanding how they declare the variable how they run some of the stuff there but again to me it's very with python you don't really need to you can just say if four is less than two you put a column here um print you know python is very cool um print hello hello world you know s you know you come to next line so you come to next line you you say s with a column you know compared to shell it's very easy print you know this is like echo in the uh, in shell print is you know the same with python it's like print and the shell is echo so you know but again you see the centers of the python is kind of very you know, very cool and variable you just declare the variable then when you want to call it you don't need to put any dollar sign you know you can just say okay print uh name is uh, my name is and then put like a this thing there then you can put a this thing then just just reference to the variable directly and then it will, it will just print my name is kenneth because here you are signing Kenneth to be the variable. Again, this is really not a Python. I don't know if I should take Python uh, towards the end, but um, I don't know if you guys want me to do some basic Python or this thing, we can we can go over it. And that would be awesome. It. Would appreciate it. Okay, yeah. So I think I can include that in the this thing. Maybe just a week we go through Python. Um, then we talked about some of the modules that you use. You know, you see import. You know, some of the common one are like uh, Sys modules, OS modules is very common, OS modules. Um, you can have import um, random, you know, if you want to work with random, you can, if you are working with like AWS Lambda, you can have both the three. Uh, it's a very popular uh, Python module. Modules is one of the things that makes Python very, very, um, very, very useful because this day you can do a lot of things with them you know a lot of things with all these modules you know os you know you can do so many crazy stuff again don't let me bother bug you with um about a python class but yeah we can do python um, basically you know touch some of the popular modules you know know how to declare variable you know know how to understand the 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 uh I can't remember the name of what they call it, like, um, you know, all those lists, uh, dictionary, you know, those are the things you need to know in any language, you know, list, dictionary. Um, um, I think there is string, tuple. Yeah, yeah, string. Number. Yeah, tuple is the same thing as uh, list in Python. Other languages, tuple, and, and Python is list. And then you have, um, you have string, you know, uh, they call it the, the number structure, uh, file structure. What do, you, what do they call it? But you know, these are one of the important things because once you see string, there are a lot of things you can do. From there, I can break this candidate down. I can extract candidate based on the position that K equals to this. You know, you can do a lot of things, you know, with string, dictionary. Dictionary is like a key value, like name, candidate, this is a dictionary, you know, um, age, uh, 50 numbers too. yeah you know those things you know these are dictionary you know those are basic things you just you need to know the once you the other ones is how you can think how you can be creative in using them to do so many things so again this is not a python then i just want to comment all this out you, know, you comment it out with this or you can use it but most of all these things follow the same um, very similar pattern so just the syntax, the way they are. So even share scripted too, you can do all this thing there. Just that the syntax is different. Um, but I think Python is still a bit friendlier for a beginner than share.
again, this is shared too, but not doing something crazy. You know, like here now, what I'm doing here now is that, okay, I say echo, this is the default password. So these centers allow me to run a command within the echo script. So the dollar sign, open bracket, close bracket. So this command, you know, I want to like run it in the print um, this thing directly. So that's why I have to like use the, the dollar sign and the, and the stuff there. So those are just, just basic things you just need to. But again, you know, <laughs> I don't, that's why I'm, I'm kind of watchful because, you know, once people see coding like this, they will run, they will be like, oh my God, coding. <laughs> they, you know, you don't, I mean, I know a lot of people get, got a job without knowing most of all these things. So, you know, but if you want to learn it, it's very, it will help you a lot. It's very cool. You know, it's, um, it's. Yeah, um, and please, can I, one more thing, like, please, the way you are doing interview, we want us to like, try to know some questions down because we're still going to need your help. So yeah, of course, of course, definitely, yeah, you know, please, yeah, please but, um, you know, that. when we, when, you know, you guys need to, when we get to that stage towards the end, you know, we will we, okay. we'll be doing that, you know, the interview process, because trust me, those are, <laughs> the these are technical interviews, you know, it's not, they will not just interview you once and, and land you a job, you know, you do first stage, second stage, some company have third stage, third stages, you know, like you'll be meeting like, senior people that have been working in the field for 10 years, 15 years, like you need to know your stuff, even though it's, uh, it's, it's not. So those are the reason why you need to really know, if not, you just be standing like in a Zoom interview. If you don't really, they will ask you questions that will just throw you off completely because you can't lie to them. You know, these are people that have been this thing for the past 15, 15 years, 10 years. You know that they, they are interviewing you live, so you know if you if you lie and you don't relate, really okay, I know Jenkins, I work with Jenkins. They can throw you off with just two two things, like you know, to that they will expect that anybody that work with Jenkins should know this. So you know, um, so those technical, you know, those are some things are very very common. They ask very well, and the Terraform as well is something we spend time with very well. We have to understand how Terraform works. Um, can you say you're going to send me that Terraform, whatever? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Terraform. You it's know. on Udemy now. Yeah, it's on Udemy. This guy, you know. Let me see if I will see it. It's, it's, you know, it's very, yeah, very cool. Yeah, your man is trying to take um Terraform. I wanted to do it that time too. Terraform certification, and it's not expensive, like seventy five dollars or so, and it's not as difficult as even AWS. But, okay. you know, you will but that, the material is comprehensive for me. Yeah, it's comprehensive. The guy tried. That, that guy really yeah, tried. Yeah, you know what? Please just help us that all those material that you used before that you think it will be helpful. So we can just be buying them maybe once in a while. Just, you know, yeah, so we the, can just have it. The problem is it's not buying them, watching them. Is <laughs> if I say, trust me, I have Yeah, that's the that thing. Using... You, can, you can buy this thing. And... Yeah, exactly. I have people that are using my free account. Even here, yeah, free. You... I have more than 30 courses I have on Udemy that I bought. I watch a lot of, I can say I watch more than 20 of them. Like, you know, I I, I have friends that I've given most of other states to, and, you know, they never checked it out. They never, you know, it's a, it's a, to me, buying it and they are $10, $11, you know, some of them are like 10, 15 hours long video, then I was, if you don't have a very strong determination you it's my practitioner that i bought since uh, yeah you know, september october i no, just okay. examine no, you know in March. Then, if i send you all this link you you know again that's why i keep emphasizing that time you know you guys need to create time to really learn these things you know it's uh those things will definitely help very well you know because those are the things you need for the interview you need for the this thing. again we're going to do do Terraform very well in the class, you know, all the concept because this they they like Terraform very well. Like in the, it's a very popular tool. Um, then, yeah, it um, I believe that's the this thing. But um, uh, today we're not. Um, um, yeah, I think we can add like a like a this thing for the class anyway, like a Python. Uh, class and um, just touch some basic parts. Um, Python is it's not that hard, honestly. It's not that hard compared to some other language. Even to me, shell is still a bit uh, 
I don't like the syntax like that. Um, but uh, yeah, let me just show how to how to run the script. The script I just shared. I I I showed it before, but um, I don't know if. Uh, and this is the pipeline we did last week. You know, I don't know if anyone was able to do this pipeline. Yeah, I don't know if anyone was able to check it I'm out. Even, this was the last class. Okay. Yeah, this was I'm the not, last class. I've not even tried it at all. Yeah, I'll try it. And I mean, the code is there, you know, in the, the code is where, where is the code? You sent it into the, in the... Yeah, yeah, that's what I shared now, you know. And Just now? Yeah, I shared it now. You know, I shared, someone shared it again. The one that said Jenkins file. Jenkins file. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Jenkins I file. I have to stop when I did not see the code. So that's why I stopped. Oh yeah, you could have. Stopped. Oh, I think I even have it. Sir. Yeah, someone shared it about the this thing, and the, 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 we talked about it uh, early in the class, in the in the class in the um, WhatsApp group. So, but this is the this is the same thing as what you are looking at here. Okay, so you just need to copy it and. Yeah, yeah, you can just clone it. You know, this is the same thing as what we have. You can just make changes here. You know, just put your repo here. Um, the name of your repo, you know, then for this Tomcat. You if you share on WhatsApp, there's no way you can, unless you have WhatsApp on your system. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, um, unless you have one WhatsApp, I don't know why this Tomcat duplicates itself. Let me delete it. Let me pick it. Uh, so, but this is the code. Um, basically, you know, these are the stages that you see, you know, check out, build, test. Later, we'll be adding more stages in between this place. Then um, we had like um, Sonar Cube, which is also very important. We install it in another server, then we're just going to run it. So if you, what you can do, especially those that are still, that are yet to install Jenkins. Um, yeah, no, I have WhatsApp on my system now. Uh, yeah, you can have WhatsApp. Again, I will add you guys to that. Uh, I will create that. Uh, that team or maybe uh, maybe Slack, and then I will add everyone there, and then because that's that's what they use in the professional world. Are you uh, are you? We use a team here in my school. That's that is what even we use for yeah. class for everything for the yeah. communication Mo professor. Yeah, most of my this thing we use team too. Microsoft team, uh, my my company, my even the clients that we work with. You know, we use team most of the time. Uh, yeah, Tim is very cool. I, I think I'm more familiar with Tim more, more than uh, Slack. So I can create a team and uh, you know add everyone there. Then you know, we share all these uh, all these things there because when you get to the real job, that's what they use most most time. You know they use all those application to like collaborate, talk to each other, schedule meeting. That you know, so that will give you a clearer this thing. Then okay. You know, let me just show the this thing. Um, as well, the script that I just created now. This is my AWS. I think it will be, I don't know how much I'm in AWS right now. I'm sure it will be a lot of money. But, um, I know uh, I was able to enter this thing once. Sometimes it will take like years. Mm, I have my distant running. Let me see. So if I check my billing dash, dashboard, uh, now four dollar, not too bad. Mm, okay. Yeah. So um, my C2 is charging me a little bit, but it's okay. It's not too. It's not too bad for me. So um, if I, I, I will try and connect to my um. Or let me just spin up another server uh, briefly, you know, just to refresh our, especially some of us still trying to, I can say, okay, this uh, Ubuntu, we've been using Ubuntu. I just want to run the distance, leave everything default, configure. Um, again, you know, you guys read more on AWS, it's very broad. Um, then I, I have a security group. You don't have to create security group every time. So if you have anyone that you know is open, you know, I will use this. So I'll just launch it. And then I will launch and then I will select my key pair. I think I have this on my computer, you know, and then I will launch it. 
Yeah, I believe this is just a, a very basic uh, revision for most of us. So if, if it's when it's running, then I will connect with my server. Um, I don't think I can connect yet. Um, I'll connect with my item. Can you guys see my item now? My item. Can you guys see my uh, item terminal? Yeah, we've seen it, but yeah, on AWS now. Yeah, we can. Oh, you can see now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Let me just connect. Uh, so I will click connect here. Then I will use SSH client. Then I just copy this because I already run. Once you run this once, you don't need to do it over and over again. So because this is just giving you permission to use this key. So permission is another concept in Linux. That is uh, very interesting. So now just enter this command like this. Um, publisher deny. I guess I need to run this thing. I think I run it before. Okay, let me see. No such files. Oh, okay. I'm not in my directory. Okay. Um, oh, you are in the Java? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me see. There. I think I have it in the download. No. Then let me run the command again. You see, try and use shortcut as well. You don't need to do things multiple up arrow, down arrow is very useful. You know, guys, you know, it will just, it just give me what I've entered before and uh, you know, boom, I'm good. So how you can run this script basically, you know, because now it's on my, it's uh, this script, you know, that I share, if you want to install Jenkins, you know, um, if you want to install Jenkins in a click, so I will just copy it manually because it's it's on my it's on my computer. It's not connected with my EC2. You know, I don't have access to it on my EC2 directly. So what I can do is that I can say Vim. I can just again you can use Vim to create a file that doesn't exist. So you don't you don't have to use Torch to create it first before you use you can use Vim directly, even though then I can give it any name. You know, um, gen dot sh. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, you can you can give it any name, but Vim will create a file at the same time, allow you to edit it. So to create the file, allow you to edit the file at the same time. So uh, I'm writing my terminal. I'll just paste it. So I just paste the. I just do control V down. So then this is the. I'm just trying to save everything because sometimes if you paste stuff here, you know, it can mess up the syntax. You know, you have to like double check the everything, but it looks like everything, um, everything looks okay. So I will do escape, I will do escape, um, escape, then column WQ. You know, this thing, you know, you guys should be very, very, Verse with it with Vim editor. So this will allow you to save this file and quit. So it means write and quit. So W, you know, you have to use escape first before you be in that mode. Once you write anything inside your Vim file, you know, you enter the uh, column on your computer, just like what you are saying there, then WQ, then you hit enter. So it will save the file, you know, it will save that particular file. So you know, I'm back here. If I do cut, cut is for you to see the content of your file. Then if I do cut of this, you know, I see what I just pasted in the file. So I have the file running now. So what you can do to run this file, you know, again, this is how you run a shell script. Um, Jenkins, the test page. So it said permission deny. You know, I deliberately do this to show you the the error report. So by default, you are not you will not be able to execute this file, you know, to, to run it, you know, which is execute. If we do something like this, let me do ls.l slash l. So if you see this permission there, you know, this is you, this is your this is a user, this is for group, then this is for other user. So basically now you only have read and write W. Um, R and W, R is for read, write. 
So you don't, you cannot execute the file, meaning that you can't run it. You can only read it. That means you can view it. Then you can write to it. You can you can type inside that file. You can edit it. You can do so many things, but you cannot execute it. So that's why this thing is giving me a permission error. So in Linux, change uh, Shimog, that's what some people call it, or change mode is a way to like um, um, create a permission to a file in Linux. So what I'm going to do now, I would say change mode plus X. So I'm saying I'm adding execute, executed uh, permission to this file. So then I will specify the name of the file, which is um, the name I give it, Jenkins. So now I said that, okay, I want to give this file execution. I want to be able to execute this file, you know? So that's why I'm doing plus. Maybe I can say plus W here. Maybe I want to be able to write. Of course I can write to the file. So I don't need to put plus W. I'm I just sorry. To... When you say execute, what do you mean by execute? Run it, run it, run, run it. Yeah, okay. just run it. Just like uh, if you go to your windows, maybe mm. you, you download the file, the yeah. exe. Okay. You know, you double click it once you want to run it. You know, you double click it. The same thing we are doing here. You oh, know, for, okay. yeah, it's like this like a file you want to run it. So, execute is like you run it that file. You know, okay. just like you double click on your, on your, maybe you want to, you download a file, a application on your Windows computer. Then you yeah. want to run it. You want yeah. to install it. <laughs> you just you remember, you need yeah. To, yeah, that's executing. You are executing that file. So, okay. yeah, so it's more like executing in this um, item. Or... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more like, um, yeah, you you creating that executing file and you are running, you want to run it. So, okay. yeah, so so there are three permission uh, level in the uh, Linux, read, write, then execute, RWX, X is for execute. If I put, if I use this command now and hit enter, then I run the command I ran earlier, you compare the difference. So now you see that it added X there. That okay, I have read write then execute permission, and you see the color change to green. So that means I can run this file now, you know, without any problem. So okay. you see the other time it's gray, you know, and they are, I only have uh, R and W. Now I have R, W, and X. So meaning that I can do everything. I can read write, then I can execute. So. So I can read, write, and execute. So let me just execute this file. So if you want to execute it, I just do this. Um, I just do this. You know, then you know it will install Jenkins. Then it will. Um, so you don't need to go through the manual stages. You know, just to show you how to do that. So. You know, it will install Jenkins. Then you know. If you see the script I wrote, you know, here, yeah, I ask it to clear the screen, then, you know, then cut the, the um, what's it called, the, the, uh, the code, the password, the admin password. You know, we just do this, then, you know, we end the class. So basically, this is what this thing is running up. Let me just show you, you know, it's doing the installation and doing everything, doing, then it will clear the screen later on. And then um, later it will clear the screen. Again, these are why scripting is very powerful. You know, they, they use all this thing in the, in the industry to like, you know, do automate things easily instead of you doing things manually and this stuff. So if you are stuck with Jenkins, you've not installed Jenkins, I think this script will be helpful. I think I'll come up with a script to do the, Tomcat installation as well, that you don't need to do all those uh, manual, uh, manual installation stop, uh, process. Then when this thing run, then we just get the IP address, then we spin it up. Mm, yeah, it's taking time, but um, yeah, after this, we just grab the IP address. No, God, if you, why break it the class? We, so you see this echo, this thing, I, I wrote echo. So it cleared the screen. 
Then I said, this is the default password and this is the command you are sending here. This is the script in this line 13 that say echo, this is a default password. And then I run this. this. This is like the command to like print the default password. So on the terminal, so I run this script automatically. So, you know, you don't have to do anything than to just copy this, you know, but, uh, you know, you have to get the IP address first, then um, paste it. Oh, shit. Sure. What am I doing? Um, where's the IP address, the public IP? Okay. If I, there's the IP address. And then if I paste it, pause A0A0, it's where Jenkins wrote. So you say Jenkins is there already. You don't have to do anything. And then if you go to your terminal again, you know, just copy this, uh, this, this, this guy, you know, then you are good. So, so you know, you can install Jenkins directly from here. It uh, just run the script and you'll be good. But again, you need to create a permission and uh, do all the stuff. So, but uh, Jenkins is up and running. I don't really need it. So I will shut down the server you know, because I have uh, the other Jenkins running. So I will go to terminate. Uh, I'm sure this, this thing will fail, <laughs> you see. It fail automatically because I terminate the server. Um, uh, I shut down the server. So but, uh, that's how you can install your Jenkins and uh, for those of us that are still not there yet. So you know, you can just download the scripts on your computer, you know, just follow that um, step and then uh, and try and run it. Uh, Any other is, question there? Is there anyone that has like kit or like Microsoft Word or R oh, can download it on my laptop? Which one? Microsoft Word. No, you don't need to, you don't need Microsoft Word. What do you need Microsoft Word for? Because I'm just trying to click on the file you sent to me. It's right. It's Wait, I notepad. think you can use your notepad now, Abby. Open it, open it with notepad. Open it with notepad or do you did you download the uh, VS Code that I said last week? Yeah, you can, you yeah. can use the VS Code. Yeah, too. right. just right click on the file. Then I think you should be able to see open with. Then you can open it with VS Code. Or what you can do again, you know, if you go to your VS Code, <laughs> Let me just close this. Uh, no, oh, I don't want to close it. So if you go to your VS Code, um, you will, you know, you will see this open. Let uh, the file this thing. You see this open file. Um, I'm looking at this. Yeah, you can. No, I don't want to open folder. Okay. If you go to the this thing. You see the you see the new file. If you open new file here in your code editor, so you, your screen. Your screen is not coming up. Uh, you can't see my um okay. my, my VS. We cannot screen. see your screen. It's uh, dark, oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I stopped sharing. Um, then, if you let me see. Okay, if you okay, can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, I want to share my, I want to share other stuff too. Let me see. If I share my screen, then, okay, let me, okay. 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 You can see my screen now. So yeah. what you can do is if you go to the file, you know, where you download it, you know, um, you can just do like this, right click, you know, you can do open with, you know, it will give you a lot of options. You can open with VS code you know, directly to open it with VS Code. So, or you can go to VS Code directly. Um, again, you know, let me let me show this actually. So if I go to, um, let me see, if I go to them, you know, right click on that file, open with VS Code, you know, you can open, you'll be able to open it directly. So, or another thing you can do if you go to file, if you go to file in your VS code, you go to open like this, then it will take you to, it will take you to your local, um, local folder. Then you can navigate to where the file is. Uh, maybe this is the file or this, then you just click on open. So automatically it will open it here. 
So you can either go to the file itself, right click on it, then open it, or you know, just open from um, or just open directly from uh, this thing. So you know, file open with this thing. So don't open with Microsoft Word. It will you not get a good even Notepad. Notepad will not really give you good uh, this thing. So unless you have Notepad plus plus, you want the cont Notepad plus plus. It's um, it, it's it's very similar to like VS Code. It has a um, good um, this thing. Um, then, yeah. Any other question, guys? You can also it may up at the time, you know, personally, you know, to if you run into any problem in some of the lab. Okay, then, um, okay, I will get back to you. Yeah. Um, Thank you. All right, guys. Um, have a good night. Since no... Bye, Here you go, catch up later, right? Bye, you don't go. I do you, bro. Hey, I will catch you. I will, I will text you. I will get back. Yeah, to you. I'm all, let's do let's do that class. Yeah, okay, bro. All right, guys. All right. Thanks oh. for everything. Good night, yeah, everyone. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. So, Jabman, I see you, Sergeant. Um, Mr. Kenneth, how? Oh, God, so Kenneth. Kenneth. Yeah. Hey, no go be so you come me. Is he around? Yeah. <laughs> it's around, maybe sleeping. Maybe it's available on July 31st now, 30th. Make it, I mean, I gotta play come now. Ah, uh, they got a day very far. Uh, hey, are... I think it's in a great day in New York together. Yeah, upstate New York. Upstate New York is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, then. Mm.